All right. Well, welcome back to the Cash and Common podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Ryan Martin, together with my host, co-host, uh, Roberto Palaccia. And of course, we've got a guest here again today, special guest, Vanessa Papania. She's here. She's going to tell us about, uh, did I pronounce your name right? Yeah, you actually? did okay, actually. Excellent. Perfectly. <laughs> and I, uh, I, uh, I would like to welcome her. I think it's going to be good. She's going to give us a bit of, a, she has a very interesting perspective. I'd like her to tell her story to start. She's going to tell us a little bit about what it's like to become a realtor working in the construction field and then becoming a realtor, you know, and maybe kind of give us a bit of uh, an insight into what that's all about. So Vanessa, you know, welcome. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you coming. For having me. <laughs> We're excited. Thank you for coming and joining us. And I know that it was yes, a lot of welcome. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. And our beautiful new space. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> what, uh, what, what is it that sort of inspired you to start becoming like, doing real estate, you know, you worked in construction. How did you transition into real estate? What inspired that move? So I actually started, um, in real estate first. So when I was actually, oh. when I was a teenager, I started working in a real estate office. Um, and that was kind of when I found my passion for real estate. Hmm. Um, but I was a young kid, you know, at that point I'm like, Oh, I need something secure because, you know, I want to be able to have a family and like, you know, have a, a, a secure job where I don't have to work in the evenings and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So like a lot of young women do, I managed to kind of like talk my way out of doing the entrepreneurial real estate thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so I stayed in it like part-time working at a, a big real estate office. Um, but after university, I was kind of at a standstill at that point. I was like, okay, well, I know I love real estate. What can I do with this? That isn't necessarily, or is a little bit more secure. I'll say, mm -hmm. Um, and I guess it kind of has to do with, you know, being in the right time at the right place. But I started in the construction industry probably 10 years ago now. Okay. Um, and it has been like a really unique process for me and it's kind of been really cool because I've been able to kind of combine like the real estate. I work in, um, the construction condo market essentially. So okay. All right. it kind of is the nice, the smooth and natural transition into the real estate condo market too. So it kind of just gives me like a full round table experience yeah. um and yeah here we are <laughs> what was that so like uh was it always in are you in toronto based uh, i am like yeah. on the construction side i mean construction is kind of everywhere i mean construction is just yeah I wherever mean, you they're know, developing right exactly yeah. right like you know the city it's literally everywhere so yeah there's like the most cranes it's, in all of North America. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, exactly. That's Actually, insane. Which yeah. is a little bit crazy, which is kind of good for your industry. It is. I mean, it's you great. Know? I mean, we saw like in the pandemic too, it was kind of the same thing where it's like everything, like the world shut down, construction didn't even like miss a beat, right? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Were, we, we didn't miss any time. We were right back at it full time. It's like, we need to get these condos built, hurry up, get to work. So, I mean, it is a good thing for, for our industry for sure, but um, yeah. Is that what it was like, like during COVID? Literally. I think I had one week off. Mm. Where, remember when every, everything shut down right. during COVID? People were like, oh, I what's COVID? <laughs> like right when it first hit and like the entire world was like on lockdown, they were like, construction people, get back to work. You guys can do it. Figure oh, it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were like, what does this mean? What's happening? <laughs> so that's like the, but you're the, so you don't work directly on the ground per se. So I am right? on the ground. Oh, are you? Um, okay. Yeah, I'm boots on the ground. I do health and safety. So okay. um, I'm on site full time. I'm not like in the office. I That was kind of, Part of the reason why I got into the industry, it's like, I'm not a really, I'm not built for office life. We'll put it that way. Mm. Um, I need to kind of be moving. I'm a very hands-on learner. So it's important for me to kind of learn from experience. And so being out on the field has been so much fun and it's so helpful, especially now since I've been starting and like actually working as a real estate agent, because it's helpful to see from start to finish how a condo gets built. For example, if I buy a house, what's the next step yeah. from, from purchase to closing? Um, so yeah, I mean, it's interesting for, for that perspective, for sure. It's also kind of like, you're right. That's not, it's not an office job. Right. So similar to what you were yeah. doing, right. Sort of in line with your person. Would you say, I mean, maybe that's a tip for somebody thinking about it, right? Like yeah. is, you know, if you're into office jobs, probably you don't want to be a realtor, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think real estate is, um, I think like with both, it's, it's kind of like a really nice balance, right? But real estate is definitely... It's definitely a fine balance. I mean, you're able to be your own boss, which is nice. Mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily trapped in an office. I'm able to work from home or work from Mexico, for example, or wherever I am when it comes to that kind of stuff. But it, it has the flexibility. And then when you're out in the field, like doing showings and stuff, also 
it's kind of a nice balance, which is why I would totally recommend real estate to anybody who's like kind of confused about what to do or if it might be for them. I think it's, I think it's a fun industry for anybody. Yeah. So what, what made you transition from construction into real estate? Like when, and when, COVID. Did, that, when, when did that happen? <laughs> COVID. COVID. <laughs> yeah. You're just like, yeah. A lot of people have made changes during right? COVID, right? Yeah. I think just like a lot of people like kind of had like a, I don't know, quarter life crisis or whatever you want to call it. And I was like, what am I doing with my life? It's all, it's like health. It's interesting because actually it's like health and safety in the transition in, which is actually quite similar to you yeah. in a lot of ways. And I guess it's sort of like, I don't know. I find that interesting. That's not my background. My background was like, I don't want to, you don't want to talk about my background. Right now. Very, <laughs> no, I would we, can, we can get into it. We can get into it. But it's, dark. Like, it's, you dark. Know, it's, just, it's dark. It's dark. It's dark. It'll just make the podcast really long. But I just, I'm, I'm wondering like, I guess as, as people who are both like in health and safety and then transitioning over, like, is it, is it a vastly different sort of pace? Is it a different kind of work to be in real estate or would you say it's like the same? And I'm asking kind of both of you, actually. I wonder if like, yeah, I mean, I would say, um, you know, it's probably for me, at least it was a different pace altogether for sure. Right. It was a little more calm. You know, I was, I was a paramedic, so it was like, you know, you know, alarms and bells and whistles <laughs> did that guy sort of like drifted like out of my actual life. Actual alarms. And yeah, 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 yeah. Like real emergencies. Um, and so, you know, and that, and that was interesting to acclimatize to then real estate where, you know, as much as people may feel like they're having emergencies in real estate, there's, there's none really, right? Like we do a lot of planning. There's a lot of organization. Like you guys all know this, right? So we try to avoid things that feel like emergencies. But um, so from that sense, yeah, you know, I, I think it took a little, a little bit for me at least to acclimatized to just slowing down a little for, like in my opinion like that yeah. was some my uh but it's interesting you a, say that about emergencies because i feel like everybody's like everything is on fire i mean i just had a call right yeah it's like oh my god you got to review this thing before the blah it's like okay yeah i mean in our yes. world is like there's so much of that right in our world and, and a lot of it's just you know it, it's just anxiety right like and and for all good reasons people are spending uh, a boatload of money on uh, the biggest purchases somewhere they're going to live or invest in. So like, you know, I could see and understand. I think we all appreciate why there might be in some anxieties, but uh, most of the time it's, you know, it's no big deal. You know, you just got to keep your cool. There's always a solution, right? Like I think I, you know, and I think as professionals, like that's, you know, what we're here to do uh, is to slow people and things down a bit and make sure everything goes correctly in the direction it has to go in. <laughs> yeah. That's a big part of the job I find is that like it is educating people and getting them comfortable with what's going on to get them to understand. Yeah. yeah nobody's dying here. Yeah. Not, yeah. Uh, nobody got hurt. We're just sort of, we got some stuff that has deadlines and that's okay. Yeah. Like if we, yeah. And those deadlines is most of the time are not, well, they're hard. movable. They're like it's not, not like it's a goalpost, yeah. like firmly in the ground. Yeah, oh my yeah God. exactly. So you true. can move a status certificate deadline if you need to. I hope my client, my clients, like, shut up. <laughs> Hopefully, they don't watch this. <laughs> no, you can't. What are you talking about? <laughs> is that me? <laughs> yeah. Is he talking about me? No, sir. <laughs> He's talking about you. No. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you know, I think it's like that's the that's kind of the. It seems like that's like a silver lining of transitioning in from something like healthcare, health, health related work, where you're sort of concerned with someone's health, mm -hmm. and uh, I guess you're still doing that work, right? Yeah. So. Um, you're still seeing it's part of your life. What do you, what do you find, uh, right? Like now that you're in the middle of it, like you're kind of like in it, you know, you're doing both. What do you find, um, is exciting and what do you find kind of hard about it? Um, I feel like I've been doing construction now for so long where I'm kind of at the point where it's like, I'm ready for a new challenge, <laughs> which is probably yeah. why I'm starting to take real estate very seriously. Mm -hmm. Um, I just find... Yeah, I mean, I just find everything about real estate so fun. Like, I love to learn and, and being able to learn about, I mean, now that I've kind of learned the gist of how a convo goes up, basically, um, it's kind of interesting just to kind of learn the rest of the processes and like, you know, the offer writing process, for example, and everything that goes into submitting an offer on a, on a condo, for example. So 
my my favorite like the most fun thing to answer your question for me is like meeting new clients and like going on this home buying journey with them like it's so much fun just like meeting new people and connecting with them and just like making making new friendships honestly it's like what it's all about just meeting new people say that you you seem like the type of realtor that like becomes like close yeah i know i'm a psycho i'm like don't let go of me i'm gonna hang on to you forever (laughs) that's great i mean you know it's great like people people genuinely want a team we were talking about this before like that's what i said yeah and and they want they want that feeling that they're being really you know taken care of by people that care right and i think coordinating together speaking to that anxiety we were just talking about a lot of that you know is solved by caring for people right and like just being like really authentic and you know and I, I think working like I you know I love working with Ryan in that sense and we became really good friends because we can connect with each other like hey listen this person is really concerned right like can you talk to them and vice versa I mean you know Ryan knows he can just get me on the phone whenever um, whenever it's required and most of the time it isn't like the bank or whatever like all the other stuff it's usually around you know, helping the client understand or educate and, you know, chill out <laughs> about something, right? Uh, I, think, so. I think like our industry gets like such a bad rap too because people just don't care. And it, like, especially like realtors, like I've had to deal with so many just in the past week alone where it's like, I literally can't even get on the phone with them. Like they don't answer yeah. their phones. And it's like- oh, Realtors. Literally like real estate agents. And yeah. it's so frustrating for me. So I can only imagine- and I know when I bought my condo and my first house, it was kind of the same thing. I didn't have a team and I was so overwhelmed and I was so stressed out. So I kind of, I mean, that's pretty much why after I bought my condo was really when I got into real estate. You didn't have your license yet. When, when I bought. bought my condo, I did not have my license. So it dawned on you like, hey, I could do this. Literally. And I, I was do it like. better than my own realtor. You know what? It was like, it, that was exactly <laughs> it. And it was like, I didn't feel like I was like, buying a home was stressful. Like it's an emotional process. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And not having, you know, a support system or even worse, like uh, having an agent that only cares about the paycheck. They don't, they don't care about me. Like I can tell she's rushing me along because she wants to get paid. Like mm. that's stressful. And I never, ever, ever want my clients to feel like that. And so I think, and I mean, I think that's also why like people who do this uh, part time, maybe like get also a bad reputation for it. I mean, I would argue that it's the opposite because I'm not relying on you for a paycheck. I'm relying on you because I want to work with you. I want to be your friend. I want to help you and like genuinely help you. I don't care about only doing this to make money on you. So, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, I think it's a different perspective, but I think that's what what it's all about. So how do you balance being at work and your phone ringing? For real estate because i know that was hard for me i used to tell a lot of people i was in a lot of meetings yeah i, like, I yeah. was like i'm, I'm in a meeting right now this guy. i'm resuscitating him. i'm gonna call you back yeah. <laughs> tomorrow morning <laughs> when i'm not on shift all right so there was a lot of that but i mean you know it, you know, I mean, I think, I think, your, I think it's just your heart can wait. It's okay. C P R. One second. I got a client. Yeah. I feel like it's. A, I mean, I know it's a challenge. I mean, how how do you how do you uh, how do you deal with that? How is that something you kind of cope with? Because I know it's tough, right? You must get pulled yeah. different directions at times. It is tough. Um, I think honestly, ultimately, it all comes down to time management and. Um, I don't want anybody who I work with to watch this, but I have a little bit of like a flexible job in the sense that I have more flexibility than obviously you as a paramedic where I can answer the phone if I'm at work. If I'm just doing an inspection, for example, it's not as like, (laughs) like saving, we'll say. (laughs) I got this. So yeah. Looking good. For the record, I never answered my photos with with a patient. But Absolutely. I mean, but I mean, I'm, you I'm know, just messing between around. Calls, just somebody, right? People just, you know, they don't trust what I say. Right? <laughs> it's fine. No. I'm no longer no, I'm, there, I'm so sure. it doesn't really matter anymore. <laughs> yeah. But no, no, but I feel like you know, I'm sure that you, you know, of course, you got to work around what's going on. I, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, I'm sure they know you're a realtor. Probably that's happening, right? Like, it's running in the background. But I feel like, you know, the it's it's interesting what you. Were, I just want to go back. You were talking about the construction industry. And seeing a building grow up from the bottom up mm-hmm. to the top, what are you doing now? Like, is there something now because of that education that you're using with clients so you can educate them about a building? I mean, I've seen some of your content. It's yeah. Because cool you're like, I mean, now, you know, what's really cool is like, oh, 
actually she knows she works in the construction yeah industry. she says these buildings are great like that's cool yeah you know so are you are you are you educating them on buildings in in, in a way that you you think other realtors couldn't because you're kind of seeing yeah the end? absolutely i mean for me, I think it comes down to like knowing what's behind the walls, right? A lot of people don't. And so yeah, seeing, I <laughs> right? I mean, you walk into a condo and you're like, cool, drywall. It's like, you don't know, like, you know, there's studs and then drywall has like whatever, the steps mm -hmm. that are involved mm -hmm. in it. So there's a lot that has to kind of go into it. And it's easier to identify things that could potentially be a problem in the future if somebody were to like buy a house, you know, like, oh, okay, that's, you know, black mold. Like that's going to be an issue, whatever it may be. Like there's a lot of stuff that you see on construction sites that, you wouldn't normally see out in the real world. So I think it, um, yeah, and I definitely use that to kind of help educate and guide my clients, like when buying, especially if they're buying an older home, for example. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's there's so much to be learned, for yeah. sure. Are you, um, you know, I, I feel like there's different takes on this, but, you know, Rob and I find that it's good to work, you know, we talked about Mark with Mark about this, but working together as a team but i do find like some realtors are pretty like siloed and they're kind yeah. of like I'm not yeah gonna talk to them like 100%. there's some realtors i don't talk to at all whereas others are very like hey how's it going i'm like i'm around i'm involved and blah, blah, blah. and uh i you know uh, my experience well actually i want to ask you about your experience like do you find it more helpful to work with a, like a more team oriented approach to what's going on or is it has it been for you strictly sort of like I'm working with a client and I'm helping a client and they get passed off to their real. And it, I don't think there's, I, I really don't think there's a wrong way necessarily. Mm -hmm. I think it's more a preference thing. I think, um, a team based approach is definitely easier if you have the right team. Mm -hmm. We'll put it that way. Um, how, what's been your experience working with lawyers so far? You can, you can be, you can be harsh if you working with lawyers, lawyers, other, other brokers um, and all that kind of stuff as well. So far, so good. Um, I've had like a couple, I mean, like I said, I think that our industry is kind of oversaturated with people that shouldn't necessarily be doing this work. So, mm, right. um, I think it's all about surrounding yourself with the right people and finding people that are like, A, going to hold you accountable, A, like B, that are actually knowledgeable and can actually help you. Um, I think that's what it comes down to it. I think surrounding yourself with- Are those the biggest like, gaps you find sometimes? Yeah, hundred percent. Right? Like it's, it's literally hard to get a deal done sometimes, mm -hmm. which is like so frustrating. So I think if you have the right people- that are there to help you, teach you, guide you, then yeah, a hundred percent. I would choose, you know, to work with the team every time. Yeah. That's good. Cause I feel like, I don't know. I often don't. Yeah. I mean, I've been it. doing this now for coming up to 10 years and that to me is, is the approach, right? For sure. Like, you know, lawyers, you know, if you can't get a hold of them when, you know, everyone else is trying to, and, and they're calling you, right? <laughs> You're like, okay, I'll try now. <laughs> I'll try my best, right? So stuff like that, I mean, that's challenging, of course. Uh, of course, with realtors, it's the same thing, you know? Like, you know, uh, you know, you just want to be able to interact and because there's always going to be those pinch moments. There's never emergencies, but then, you know, you don't want to miss opportunities sometimes, I think, you know? Because really who gets affected the most it's 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 the client right and so that being said you don't want to you know mess with their experience because really like it ends up kind of tainting everybody right so i i really like having uh even if it's someone brand new like hey listen this is who i'm at this, you know a bit nice introduction and then you know if that's the only deal you ever do again together hey that's fine but let's just work together on this one and get through it. Let's, let's manage this well. So the experience is great. Right. And cause that's what you really want. Like, you know, I always strive to get referrals, get a, a Google review, like, yeah. you know, and, and yeah, we're always sort of working on building that relationship. So who wants to get that all messed up and messy, you know? Yeah. Um, that's yeah. a big, and like, that's the, you know, like there could, there could be some valuable education around that piece. If you're like for brokers in that, there's no, you know, I mean, brokers, I mean, agents are drafting agreements of purchase and sale. It's helpful to have a lawyer that's around that right. can be like, well, yeah. tell me what's going on yeah. so I can, I can help. I could get you to structure that a bit better maybe, or think about it a little bit through a different lens. And it's like one of the most valuable pieces of information of, of information is I find like when you create the silo, it becomes really, really challenging to, uh, 
to work with, you know, to work with that agent or to work through a specific deal when people are just sort of like not available, you know, so it's, been, it's a personality thing too. It is though. That's the you thing. Know, and that's why I'm saying it, it's right? not completely wrong to do it that way. That's the thing also, right? Because yeah, I guess, I mean, to me, in my personal opinion, it's like, it's a trust thing, you know, people just feel like they can't trust anyone. Maybe they had bad experiences in the past. Like I get it, you know, but it's hard, right? Like to knock down those barriers sometimes. Um, and you know, I, I mean, you know, I just simply try and, uh, do my best to do the best job I could do. But I, it's, it's interesting. I find really it comes down to personalities. Yeah. Like, and likewise, you know. like clients need to understand that that's what's going on behind the scenes. Right. Kind of, it's kind of like, it's better to have it happen behind the scenes. You shouldn't have to be calling me. If I can get a hold yeah. of your realtor and I can get a hold of your yeah. mortgage broker, yeah. then things tend to move a little bit quicker, right? They tend to move along a little bit quicker. And if you talk to other lawyers about this, they'll say like, uh, some lawyers will say, I'd rather just not talk to those people. I just want to talk to the client. I think that that's, I think I understand where that comes from. And it's really it comes from a fear of like not getting proper instructions, et cetera. Whatever. Yeah. There's some legal technicalities about what right. you shouldn't do, do, but there is just the practicality of a deal and how a deal really works. And so it doesn't happen. I don't do it by myself. I don't close this deal by myself. We do, you know, if things are all going completely smooth, then yeah, we're closing it by ourselves, yeah. I guess. But that's pretty <laughs> rare, right? That everything is in place, that everything is perfect. Right. So, you know, and, you know, I feel like you and I have gone back and forth on this point before because we, you know. Yeah, because we worked was, together There were some realtors, right, that we've talked about that we're like, oh, you're like, okay, yeah, you could, you could, get more involved Ryan with that realtor. <laughs> <laughs> speak to her so that you guys like, oh, I know who you're talking about. I, uh, <laughs> so I, I, you know, I, I, I've seen the lights sir. I've seen, no, I mean, I get it. I think it's true, you know? And I think, uh, I think I make it, I think, I think I've always kind of made an effort though, to, to try oh, and get, agree. to yeah. be it, to be, to make it a collective, ex something that we do together. So the way you give lawyers a good reputation. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. In a world <laughs> where, yeah. let's be honest, they don't yeah. have the best reputation. Exactly. They have, yeah. they have bad reps. They have bad yeah. reps. It's true. They have, is that, you find they have bad reps? I mean, it's tough. I mean, okay, I put it this way. The one that I used, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't necessarily know that I was in better hands. We'll put it that way. So. Okay. <laughs> So I, I, I do. Or yeah. you mean like better hands than if you were somewhere else? Exactly. I think, um, yeah, I think they might have a little bit of a bad rap just because a lot of lawyers like real estate agents just kind of take advantage of the situation. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but I think it's an easy joke because obviously like, you know, the world of suing people involves yeah. like real. But I mean, you know, I think most real estate lawyers are are good. I think the ones to me, I mean, you know, it's about being personable, right? And being available, right? Because it's very transactional and it's... And that's the thing is like, again, like I think we talked about this before, yeah. I think if a lawyer is charging really like, you know, if a, if a realtor is coming to me asking for lower fees, I, I always say like, it's really hard. Like think about it. Mm -hmm. it's how can you run a practice when yeah. fees are really, really low, right? It becomes really, really challenging. You have to ask yourself what you're paying for. As a client, exactly. you should really be asking yourself, is that lawyer going to be available for me? Right. Are they going to be communicating with their, my broker? Are they going to have time to? Or do yeah. they have 500 deals in order to keep their practice right afloat? And I could tell you there is definitely a difference. Like, you know, when you, the discount. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> closing, get what you pay for. Like, it's like when stuff gets sort of sticky towards the end, like, yeah, it's so tough. And it's not that they're bad lawyers, those people. right? They're just, right? They're overworked. Yeah, it's it's their business model. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah. But like, anyway, I mean, I think just to shift gears actually, because I want to I want to ask Vanessa about first time home buyers, and I know that that's sort of your bread and butter. Yes. Uh, first, why 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 do you think that's your bread and butter? But secondly, what is it you're telling first time home buyers that's sort of different than what they might get out of a different realtor? Is there anything particular? Um. Okay. So it's my bread and butter because I was a first time home buyer mm. twice. I mean, I bought my house and then I bought my condo and both times I felt just as unprepared ah, <laughs> as I was the first time. Um, and so I kind of made that my mission, why I want to help people. Um, I think the difference between me and other real estate agents is that like what I'm telling people is 
do what's right for you. Like I think the the whole concept of real estate is like rush, 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 do it right now. If it works for you, that's great. Do it now. But if you can't afford it, there are other solutions. Like let's kind of figure it out together. I don't think that necessarily everybody should be jumping into like buying a house if you're going to be house poor next year and you can't afford the mortgage. So mm-hmm. um, and I think that kind of ties into, you know, building these relationships and these friendships. It just kind of comes down to having my client's best interests in mind at all times. So, yeah. And so you're thinking about that um, you know, you're, you're, yeah, you're like, you're not, you're not forcing them down the path. Yeah. Of paying, right. You're thinking, okay. And that's, you know, you would think like a realtor, they have an objective, which yeah. is to try and get the house sold or the, the whatever, right. to buy, get you to buy. Um, but I could see how being a, like a valuable resource for a client is to say to them, like, you can't afford this. It's yeah. probably going to be a problem for you. And like that, goes for you of course that's gonna they expect this from their broker but yeah yeah for a realtor to to say hey like do you think you can do this like can you really do have you spoken to the broker have yeah you really you know uh do you understand what it means to get a mortgage and how what that what that process is all about did you take the time to do it so you know a, a lot of a little bit of education kind of goes a long way right. for a client and so you know it, yeah, do you, I, I feel that's a big gap for first-time buyers too. Yeah, right. They just need to know a lot, and what their options once, are too. Yeah, right? like this is the first right. time. Yeah, right. So having uh, someone that's willing to hold their hand more, right, and be patient, and yeah. you know, make sure they're they're comfortable with their decision. Yeah, which I think is great because I, I, it's like you mentioned. I think there's a lot of people uh, in, in in both of our fields that are like. Yeah, you're good. You know, we'll make yeah. it work. We'll make it work. Well, no. Like, <laughs> once they close, they, yeah. they got to make it work, <laughs> right. right? Like, so, <laughs> like, we're out of the picture at that point. Um, and, I mean, you know, you never want to have those calls of regret. You know, that's the worst thing ever, right? So, um, yeah, no, it's good. I mean, I, I feel I feel the same, you know? Like, education is such a big component. Um, and setting them up for success, too, right? You know, like that's where the whole team coordination, I think, comes into play a lot is, um, you know, getting them before they even go out looking like, you know, and with their big eyes, first time buyer eyes, um, making sure they understand the numbers, you know, and they're really like feeling, okay, this is a suitable decision for me. Right. Uh, You know, I'm really big on that, too. So I think it's important. And what's the like, I mean, that that piece on education, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I feel like, you know, you pretty active on my social media yeah, right i try <laughs> and so like no but it's good i, I your stuff's great um Thank you. i think uh you're you know there's there's an uh, indications there that you're kind of passionate about educating yeah about real estate right so you like you know there's love for real estate yeah which i think it sort of stems out of that and then like okay well what can i i because sometimes you know it can be tricky to figure of out what course. you're going to do on social media right yeah. like what's going to be useful and I feel like if you start from the base of, which I think you sense seems like you do, you start from the base of like, hey, I want to educate these, I want to educate my yeah. first time home buyers. Um, it seems like a good place. Is that kind of where your head goes when you're thinking about what to make? Yeah. Um, I mean, when I first started, I, I, I didn't like have a niche, right? It was kind of just like, we'll figure it out. Like, we'll just kind of roll with the punches and whatever falls into my lap happens kind of thing. Yeah. And I guess it just kind of turned out that it's like, okay, all of my clients are like first time home buyers trying to get into the market. Maybe this is like what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, so I think from there, it was like a lot easier to kind of figure out ways that I can be providing value essentially, um, right. on social media with my clients as well. But, um, yeah, that's essentially what I'm posting on social media. That's what I'm trying to do is find ways to provide value and find ways to educate people on, all the many things that there are to know about so many <laughs> buying <things>. their first home. <laughs> so many things. It's such an emotional process and overwhelming. So I think it's important to kind of know the basics before jumping into it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What are some trends you're finding um, with first-time buyers now? These are the ones you're working with. Where are they buying? How are things shaping up? Like how are, you know, financing or, you know, even down payment. I know like parents are getting involved. Yeah. Like parents are getting involved yeah supplying down payments more and more now um we're getting into the spring market which is nice things have been a little bit slower with you know the the um right hikes and all that kind of stuff but 
since the bank has kind of started to stabilize the rates, people are starting to kind of get back into the market, which is nice. Um, condos and a lot of my clients, if they're not really interested in condos are moving far in the outskirts of the city. Hmm. Um, for me, my biggest thing is like find the areas that are going to give you the biggest return on your investment. So if you're moving to like North York, like sure, that's a great area, but why don't you move to Hamilton or like Pickering where these areas are like booming or, mm. or about to boom. And so you can still like make a lot of money on, on your investment. Um, so I think ultimately it kind of just depends on financially, obviously where they are, where they're standing. Um, the rental market is crazy. So I think a lot of people are starting to see that now too. People are like not able to find places. There's just no supply and there's just so much demand. So I think that's so for specifically to rent out. Yeah. Really? Wow. Well. And the prices are insane. Like there's like the one bedroom condos in Toronto are going for like, what was the last one? I just did 2,700 bucks a month. Wow, whereas one, last one year, that's crazy. Yeah. One bedroom. Whereas wow. last year it was like 2,200 bucks a month. Like mm. it's unrealistic. It's crazy. Yeah. Do you think you're going to, are we going to see it? Are we going to see that continue to climb? What do you think? You have any thoughts on this? I don't know. Um, I think that the rental market, I don't think it's going to crash. We'll put it yeah. that way. I don't, I don't think so. Um, I think that slowly people are going to start getting back into the, um, buyer's Becoming market. Buyers again. Yeah. yeah. So I think the rates will kind of stay steady, maybe fall a little bit and there's going to be a lot less demand, which is going to kind of help to even mm -hmm. it out too. But I don't know if I see the rates falling. I mean, it's the same with the real estate market. They always kind of cycle. They're cyclical, but they always end up going back up. Yeah. So, and I think, I think you brought up a good point cause it's true. Like as mm -hmm. affordability from a purchaser's standpoint, get got tighter and tougher which it is now yeah. well i mean people still have to have shelters so right. they look to rent right so you're just creating more renters and of course there's not any more rental spaces being right. blown up anywhere and less investors buying rental spaces so it just creates more uh demand than than supply and of course that always increases uh prices right yeah. but it's pretty wild to think that a one bedroom twenty seven hundred dollars uh in Toronto right now, that's, that's pretty expensive. Like, yeah. Yeah. And that, and, we're, and so when you say 2,700, I'm just curious, is that like in Liberty village? Is that somewhere really trendy or is yeah, the downtown core? I mean, pretty core. much anywhere. It's, trendy it's now, literally downtown. anywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like anywhere downtown, honestly, yeah. it's, it's insane. Like, and there's just no supply. So ultimately yeah. that's what it comes down to. It's, it's tough for renters out there. <laughs> yeah. Well, are you doing some, are they, are you helping renters with really leases these days or is that? Sort of I am. Yeah. I just helped my client secure one today, thankfully. Um, nice. because I don't, I don't want like, they come to me like so stressed out, you know sure. what I mean? It's like they're, they're, they're unable to find a place. And if they do find a place, these landlords are looking for like a plus, 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 plus tenants because there's so many applicants. Why not? We're going to wait Why until not? we get the best yeah. one. Right. And they're going to pay, you know, three times the actual price that it's worth. So do you find that, that it helps? So it helps that tenant look like an A plus client. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think I think it's it's all about knowing what um, what to look for and how to make yourself look like that A plus plus tenant, mm. right? So it's all about kind of finding those um, those ways to get in. So, for example, you know, if you don't have the best credit, let's find other ways to make you look like a really good tenant. Are you clean? Like, I make all my clients write little. Um, like notes or like cover letters, I guess you can call them yeah, yeah. to the landlords where it's like, this is why I would be the best tenant for you. Like, it's nice to meet you. Here's a little fun fact about me. Like, I think that's great. It's about building relationships. That's yeah. what the industry is. Right. And so I think that helps a lot, obviously with being organized and having all your documents sure. in order, but I think that goes a long way. So yeah, I, I definitely help renters. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure it helps as well. Like once you get into the, like, if you're doing that for buying too, mm -hmm. right? Like, Oh yeah. Getting, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about this market, but I do. I remember there was a time when it mattered the kind of person you were selling to. It was did, it just yeah. like the highest bidder. It might also be we're trying to sell to a family or we're trying yeah. to, we want the neighborhood to match the person that's coming on board. And so it makes a lot of sense. I mean, I feel like you've got to, you know, as a realtor, yeah, try and highlight those things. Exactly. If that's, if that's what's going on, you know. Um, is there. Is there like a, is there a plan for you with respect to 
what you want to do on social media, like coming up, or are there any other, any other ideas you have like for teaching? Cause I feel like you, there's a lot there for teaching. Cause I feel like I saw that you had like a link for sitting down with me and like doing like a, I guess it was like a consult. I don't know if it, yes. was, like, it was like consultation. Yeah, it is. So it's yeah. almost, that's kind of cool. I think that's kind of, what's that right. consultation look like, like? What do you, what do you do? Yeah. It's, um, <clears throat> it's just a, a, a meet and greet really. Mm -hmm. Um, tell me your situation. Here's how I can help you. Um, let's, you know, let's see, let's see if we can vibe kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I love social media. I mean, I think that the most important thing, like you said, is being authentic and it's so important for real estate agents to kind of brand themselves in a way where you, you, you're set apart from the hundred million other realtors there are. Right. It can be um, hard to be authentic on there. Though. It can. It can. And especially as a woman, it's definitely something that is not easy. Like every time I post something, I'm like, oh my God, what are people going to think about this? <laughs> and then I'm like, no, shut up. Like no one cares. Like no <laughs> one cares what you're posting. Just get the content out there. That's all that matters. So I think it's kind of like a love hate thing. But um, yeah, there's that internal struggle. Yeah, right? all the time. I think everyone, I mean, you know, I know we have the same. Thing. Yeah. Did you find, did you find that when you first started, you had a hard time doing it? Like, yeah. Or, or no? Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. I think it was worse back then. Now I'm just like, I don't give yeah, a crap anymore. <laughs> and it just takes time too, right? Like it's, yeah. it just takes time. You gotta like, you gotta yeah. just put yourself out there, put yourself out there. And That's then, exactly it. I mean, it's kind of just getting used to it and just being comfortable with the uncomfortable. Right. And it's That's not, it's not comfortable being on camera, but I mean, growth happens, right? It's yep. exactly it. Do you have any social media heroes that like you, you sort of like Ryan Martin, the, you the look, property list? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's number one. He's at the top of my list. I did reach out to you. I was like, oh, <laughs> cool. You got good stuff. But, yeah. That means I'm searchable. I love that. I mean, yeah. you found me. So <laughs> <laughs> social media people, I don't know. Or Let's not. Or like, is it just like, you're just like, no, I'm going to do this. Or you um, how about outside of even social yeah, like, media. like whoever. not social media. Anything. Is there anyone like from a business perspective? You're like, wow, I really respect. Good question. What exactly. they've, you know, accomplished Oof. like to emulate. Them or... <laughs> That's a really great question. So we're putting you on spot. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm put on the spot. I like, I don't know. I just, okay. I, love... I mean, you know, I, I mean, you know, I, I like, for example, like I always thought Richard Branson was the coolest guy, right? Because he's really good at just building teams. Right. Yeah. So he owns an airline, a record company, like yeah. rocket ships, uh, clothes, like a phone <laughs> company. It's like, you know, it's obvious that like he doesn't know everything about all these. Yeah. No way he does. Yeah. But it's, but it's great. Like, I, th I think it's really amazing that he can, you know, somehow figure out and attract and retain the right people. Mm -hmm. Right. And actually build out these really cool brands. And, you know, they're all under this brand like Virgin. Right. I, I, I don't know. I, yeah. I always thought that was really, you know, I like to love to be that kind of guy. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. that. I like the brand. The Virgin brand is the like, it's kind of like the, I mean, I don't know. I like, I'm a Red Bull. I like Red Bull. Yeah. He talks <laughs> about Red Bull a lot. It's true. <laughs> I think Red Bull is really cool because it's like, oh, Red Bull, the drink? No, not the drink. We also do like extreme sports. We also do this, yeah. we also do that. But like, so I, you know, uh, but I sympathize with what you're saying there with Richard Branson, right? And like, it's like, okay, how diverse can you be? Um, but I don't know. I mean, you know, you don't have to have necessarily a hero, but. I do. Sort of I, I wouldn't necessarily say like on social media, but I love Ed Milet. I don't know if you guys know who that oh, is. Oh, yeah. Of I'm course. Obsessed. His like his podcast i listen to it every day it's like so inspiring i just love people that are like he's a real estate guy though. yeah well yeah. not really um he's just a serial entrepreneur entrepreneur yeah okay. um yeah but i just love that like i just find it so inspiring people that just like build businesses from nothing and then they just he lives through like service so it's like all about helping people which is why it like right. resonates with me because it's mm. like that's what it's all about it's helping people it's not so much like for my own gain it's like how can i help the most people possible yeah. I, mean, I think that's what it comes and down to. Social media can help with that, I guess, if you do that the right way. That's true. Yeah. That's, Ed Milet, that's, cool. that's interesting. Do you like Grant Cardone then? Is that sort of no, like, no, I don't like Grant Cardone, honestly. I feel like he's too, I don't know, aggressive. <laughs> he's too aggressive. Interesting. Ed Milet's pretty aggressive, I feel like. I think, I think there's he, a balance. There's a balance. Exactly. There's he's he's aggressive, but he's. He's less showy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. He's more, yeah, always you're right. Out of a jet. Exactly. <laughs> that's true. Modest. Yeah, yeah you're right. That's true. That, yeah. that is actually what it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, look, I, I, uh, I think that having it's, it's helpful to have that, you know, like you're looking up to someone and figuring out, yeah. okay, like what can I do and how does that resonate with me and how can I 
make my content reflect that. Yeah. Right. Uh, and you're saying to be of service. That's interesting. That's yeah. That's really good. I mean, I feel like I think with, that's important. With that message, like yeah. going forward, you're likely to you'll succeed to continue 100%. to grow and like yeah. to succeed. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I think that's pretty cool. I know. I know when I left EMS, it was really important to feel like I was still having some yeah, positive impact in true, someone's life. Yeah, especially, yeah. Like, and, uh, you know, a lot of people may not think that initially. Like, you know, you get into business, oh, you're looking out for yourself. Kind yeah. Of. That's sort of, you know, the mentality that might float around. But, you know, all skills are transferable in every right. way, right? Like, you know, uh, and I think it's amazing whenever I hear anyone trying to, like, reinvent themselves. Yeah. Because I know what that process feels like, you know, I've done it more than once now. And, and, and it's, um, it's something that it takes a lot of courage, but it also takes a lot of time and faith in yourself. Right. It to does. Actually say, sure. hey, you know, and so it's, so speaking to like, you know, who do you look up to and stuff? You know, it's such a, it inspires you, right? It says, okay, you know, and it's, it's funny when I first got into this business, um, you know, I, I was trying to park myself somewhere, right? And I thought, okay, I'm going to just walk into all these different brokerages and pretend that, you know, they need, they need to sell me on why I should work there, right? Because I figured, you know, I was so motivated and that's the way it should be. You know, yeah. like I know what I can bring, right? And it was interesting. I ended up working on the team where it was the only time I walked on the office and I was like, Oh shit, like I want to be here. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, I want, like, I see what this guy's doing. This guy's operation This is the business I want to emulate. Right. Yeah. Mm. And it was interesting. Like it really took me aback and realized, okay, you know, I'm really nothing. <laughs> yeah. And I have a lot to build on yeah. here, you know? So, uh, I think, you know, finding inspiration, I mean, yeah, it's great when it's someone like on social media or whoever. Right. But, it's just it could be anybody, you know. Sure. You might You're you right. may not even met meet them yet, and you mm -hmm. know suddenly like they're they kind of like you know make you rethink, you know what what you're doing, how you're doing it. But yeah, I think I think if you're working from the perspective of adding value and being a service to people, I mean, you know, the world's your oyster, right? Like you just keep on with that attitude. Like yeah. Everyone's. What you, uh, you know, you'll have to be busy. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> on that note about different brokerages, like you settled on. EXP. EXP. Yeah. Did you have like a debate about that or did you think about it or what, yeah. what, what made you settle on them? Um, EXP was kind of a no brainer for me because I feel like it's, um, it's not a sales pitch or anything, but <laughs> whatever. I feel like it's like the, the best brokerage for people who want to build a team. Um, okay. Because they're, they, they're like, they kind of have that, you know, business model, I guess, where people are joining underneath you and you're teaching them. Um, but when you join EXP, you have to join somebody's team. You're joining, um, a mentor, they call it. Oh, okay. Um, so I, I think it was a no brainer for me because of that, just because of that aspect. And my goal long term is to build a team so that I can, you know, coach people and help real estate agents get into the business also, and especially women, but figuring out, you know, how's the easiest way to do it and learn from my mistakes. Here's what we can do better, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it was so you um, get some big dreams then. Yeah, Good. I know. <laughs> Good for you. No, it's great. You need to, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. You do. So then do you have like, do you have advice for realtors coming into the business now and looking for a brokerage? What should you look for maybe? And also like personality wise, what yeah. should you think about? I mean, yeah. I mean, definitely finding a team or a mentor that you can actually um, relate to and trust. I think that's the most important thing. Um, just joining somebody's team that you actually want to be on. Cause I think a lot of people just don't really provide value. And at that point, what's the point of just hanging your license on the door? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would also say, um, just find ways to provide value. Mm -hmm. That would be my biggest piece of advice for a new real estate agent. It's find where so you were saying just, yeah. Find ways to provide that value. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's great. I mean, I feel like we're just towards the end now anyway. Uh, anybody, do you have any final thoughts for anything? Uh, did you want to leave either your first time home buyer clients with uh, brokers, realtors, business people in general? What's exciting about what's the market that you're seeing? Yeah, what's exciting about That's a good question. Spring market. Spring market is always exciting. 
there's just so much happening. Um, I would say find yourself a team that you can trust. <laughs> find yourself a good mortgage agent, a good lawyer, a good real estate agent. Mm. <laughs> that would be the, you know, the first step. And then um, from there, just identifying what your goals are and, and where you see yourself, I guess, and, and how you can make those goals happen. That would be my piece of advice. Well, Vanessa, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, guys. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm sure we'll, we'll have you on again at some point. That would be awesome. Uh, as, you grow, as you grow, and you'll be <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm too busy for yeah, Ryan now. sorry, guys. No too time. busy for the Cash in Common <laughs> podcast. But, but we'll, we'll, we'll get an update yeah, yeah. and try and catch you uh, as, as things go, uh, go forward here. So thanks, thanks cool. so much for your time. Thank you, guys.